Hi guys, welcome or welcome back. Thank you so much for being here. It's so greatly appreciated, it truly, truly is. Before we start, let me give you my usual disclaimer that this video is for educational purposes only. Please do not take what I say as fact. Please always do your own research and come to your own conclusions. Next, if you have not liked, subscribed, or commented yet, please consider doing so. It really helps me out. I really, really appreciate it. And lastly, a huge thank you to my subscriber, Ebus Paint Fox, for suggesting this case to me because it is crazy. And I loved, loved, loved researching this. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much for that. Okay, let's get started. Brandon Chiklis was born on July 24th, 1997 in Lowell, Massachusetts to parents Paul and Trisha. He has two brothers, Ethan and Patrick, and he has a sister, Jasmine. He graduated from Montachusett Regional Vocational High School in 2015. He was a member of the Boy Scouts of America for over 10 years and achieved the rank of Life Scout with Troop 41 in Fitchburg. He loved the outdoors, hiking and camping, which made the Boy Scouts obviously a great fit for him, right? He also liked to travel with his favorite trip being with the Boy Scouts of America to Philmont Scout Ranch in New Mexico. He was described as a sweet boy who loved to make people laugh. At the time of his death, 20-year-old Brandon was working for a local HVAC company for over two years. He loved to learn everything he could about the HVAC business, and he even practiced with fixing stuff around his mom's home or dad's home. He had a goal to own his own HVAC company one day. It was his passion, and he wanted to master it. During his time at Votech, Brandon would start dating Julia Enright. The two met their sophomore year when they rode the bus together. 24-year-old Julia was a phlebotomist by day and a dominatrix by night, <laughs> who went by the name Princess Jasmine. For context, phlebotomists take blood samples from patients who need to have testing done, or they take blood from donors for people who need blood transfusions. In 2018, Julia was dating a man named John Lind, and Brandon Chiklis was living with his girlfriend of four years, Jocelyn Williams. June 22, 2018. Julia and Wright texts her boyfriend, John Lind. Do you think we can add bubbles to a bloodbath? She was kind of a freak. After this text was sent, she sent a text to Brandon Chiklis asking him to meet her at a treehouse by her home the same treehouse that the two would be intimated at when they were in high school together. She went on to tell him not to tell anyone that they were meeting and that they, she had a special surprise for him. Brandon responds, sad. Brandon responds, you're my only friend and I never see you. You're officially the only one that knows the real me. Julia Enright responds, it should be fun, smiley face emoji, and then reminds him not to tell anyone. Then she texted her boyfriend again, telling him that she may have a surprise for him, but that she couldn't text him about it. June 23rd, 2018, Brandon Chiklis was last seen at 1 p.m. by a family member when he told them he was going to visit his father in Wyndham, New Hampshire. To go out for a while that night and just have some dinner and talk and catch up on things. And how did he sound when you talked to him? He was perfectly fine the week before. Yep, everything was fine. It has been weeks, and Paul Chikla still cannot come to terms with it all. The murder of his oldest son, Brandon, the arrest of Julia Enright, Brandon's childhood friend. He wasn't a troublemaker. He didn't do anything that was bad. Paul Chiklis's life turned upside down the week of June 23rd when Brandon never made it to his house in Wyndham, New Hampshire. When did you realize something was wrong? Sunday. Late afternoon, um, weekend was almost over, haven't heard from him. Um, usually I would get a phone call or a text. He arrived at Julia's home shortly after and that was the last time that his phone pinged. June 29th, 2018, Brandon Chiklis's abandoned gray Honda Civic was found in a supermarket's parking lot. Surveillance camera caught Julia Enright dropping off the car in the parking lot. July 10th, 2018, a jogger would find Brandon's remains in a state of decomposition on the side of Route 119 in Ringe, New Hampshire. The remains were wrapped in a Land's End blanket, 
and placed in garbage bags that were taped together along with a blue tarp and a beige canvas sheet. There are at least a dozen cuts which are not the same as stab wounds according to the chief medical examiner because they do not puncture. Brandon was so badly decomposed that it is impossible to determine his time of death, along with being unable to determine if the wounds were his only cause of death. Some parts of Chickless's body still had skin or ligaments when he was discovered. On the bottom of his ridge, on the bottom of his rib cage, there was a mark that could be a knife wound, and he had another wound on his right side. The medical examiner went on to say that he could not determine if there were any other stab wounds or if the two wounds found were fatal. July 13th, 2018. Detectives brought Enright down to the station for questioning. At first, she denied that she saw Chickless that day. But after officers pressed her, she finally admitted that she did see him, telling officers that she was happy that they made her be honest. <laughs> okay. Then she told them that, that the last time she saw him, he left to go buy the white stuff that goes up your nose. And she has no idea what happened to him after that. So basically insinuating that his dealer killed him. Officer said she freely showed them Facebook messages between the two. When they asked to search her phone for deleted text messages, she asked if they could do something like that. Of course. I'm not the smartest, right? Sorry. <clears throat> <clears throat> then she told officers that she would be fine with that, but could they do it tomorrow? When officers told her that if her phone suddenly goes missing, that it's going to look very suspicious, that's when she decided to hand the phone over. I mean, come on, girl. When asked why she told Chickless multiple times not to tell anyone that they were meeting up, she claimed it was because she wanted to protect his relationship with his girlfriend. When officers pointed out to her that she lived on a 30-acre property and how would his girlfriend know if they were in a treehouse or in her bedroom, she told officers that her bedroom only has a sheet for a door and she wanted to be alone with him. When officers were conducting the interview with Julia, other officers were searching the family home after being given permission from her father to do so. Inside the home, they found. Ready? Buckle up. Buckle up. <laughs> Vials of blood with people's names scribbled on them. When questioned, she told officers that the blood belonged to friends and it, that it was their idea to have her take it. I mean, she is a phlebotomist. Telling officers that it may seem creepy to some, but to them, it was like an eccentric friendship necklace. They also found dead animals in the home. And when they questioned her about it, she told them that she enjoyed preserving them by injecting them with chemicals. That's when officers brought up the concept of how people might go from working on dead mice or snakes to something else. To which Enright responded, I see where you're going with this, but I can never hurt another person. Okay. Bullshit. Inside the treehouse, officers found restraints along with blood stains that belonged to Brandon Chickless on the stairs leading up to the treehouse, inside the treehouse, and under the treehouse, and also in Julia Enright's car. During her trial, Julia Enright says that she did go to the treehouse with Brandon Chickless that day and that she was planning on being intimate with him. <clears throat> But once they were there, her boyfriend texted her hello, and then she decided that she couldn't go through with it, even though she told officers that her and her boyfriend were in an open relationship. She goes on to testify that when she told Brandon that she had changed her mind during foreplay, he began to essay her, so she had to pull out her knife and him to protect herself. 
a very good friend of Julia's testified that she did always carry a knife around with her. But when Julia told her about what happened that day, she never mentioned the essay to her. Her defense attorneys told the jury that she was so traumatized by the essay that she was unable to talk about it, which is why it never came up in her cover story. Other things that came out in the trial. Eight days before the murder of Brandon Chickless, Julia Enright prop... I forgot about this. Julia Enright propositioned Planned Parenthood to let them keep a... Julia Enright propositioned Planned Parenthood to let her keep a fetus that she had aborted so that she could play with its bones. Not surprisingly, they refused this request. Freak. I'm sorry. Come on. She would routinely place dead animals in bags so that she could use their bones after they decomposed as art. Along with the vials of blood, officers found a used condom collection and numerous knives. Plastic tubs were filled with animal carcasses in different states of rotting. A picture of Enright licking blood off of a body part and a picture of someone holding an organ were also found by police. 13 days before Chickles went missing, Julia bought rope, a chain, and other things that can be used to tie someone down on her credit card. That credit card will get you every time. FYI. She was also seen three days after Chickles went missing on surveillance camera buying new carpeting from Home Depot. The new carpeting was then found in the treehouse. Under the carpeting was Brandon's bloodstains. Officers found a notebook that belonged to Julia Enright. Inside the notebook, she wrote, I daydream about it on occasion. I have this insatiable curiosity to kill a person. She also wrote about how she wanted to cure the world of overpopulation. I don't really think that that's your job, Julia Enright. That's really not your job, okay? Leave it to the man upstairs. Just saying. I can't. These people. When asked about the notes that were found, Julia admitted to being the one that wrote them, but she says that she did so for a creative writing class. I never took creating like writing class like that in college or high school. Julia Enright was found guilty in November of 2021 and sentenced to life in prison with a minimum of 25 years. Her boyfriend, John Lind, was arrested on December 10th, 2021 on charges of accessory after the fact for helping Enright wrap up, move, and dump the body of Brandon Chickless. And he's facing 20 years if convicted. Okay, guys, if you are still here, thank you, thank you, thank you so very much. I truly appreciate it. This was crazy. Again, Ebus Paint Fox, thank you so much for bringing me this case. I loved it. Uh, leave me a like and a comment. Let me know what you thought. Please subscribe if you haven't yet. If you have any suggestions, email me, harding527 at yahoo.com. As long as the information's on my side, I'm pretty good about covering your cases. When it's kids, it does take me a little longer to do because I have to kind of build myself up to it. So if you've emailed me about a kid and I haven't done it, that's probably why. <laughs> They're kind of hard for me to do. But send me your cases, please. I love hearing from you guys. I love talking to you guys. And until next time, stay safe out there.